Now, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you back here inside the ring. And at this time, we would like to call into the ring at this time our lovely, beautiful, but light fight night ring card models. Where are they at? We got some special t-shirts to throw out into the crowd. Our ring card models make your way into the ring at this time. In our Butt Light Fight Night ring card models make your way into the ring. Welcome to the ring, our Bud Light Fight Night Ring Card Models! We have a very special t-shirt giveaway from our sponsor, Dr. David Escalante at Vitality Chiropractic Recovery and Wellness. If you want a free t-shirt, make some noise! All right, we have a couple of t-shirts left. Hands up in the air, hands up in the air. Once again, a big round of applause to our lovely ring card models doing an excellent job here tonight. Let's give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. But Light Fight Night is presented to you by Paradigm Combat Sports and Next Fight Up. Paradigm Combat Sports is an elite training center in Town, Houston, Texas. Paradigm believes in the positive impact combat sports can make to build confidence, resilience, and healthy habits. And it is our mission to inspire our athletes to be champions in life, in and out of the ring, or in the steel cage. Ladies and gentlemen, we also have Next Fight Up, which is promoted by Forrest Washington, Joe Fredevelt, and Mike James. In over seven years of operations, Next Fight Up has prided itself in building some of Houston's biggest prospects, providing competitive and exciting fights for H-Town fight fans. So a big thank you to Paradigm Combat Sports and Next Fight Up. Let's give them a huge round of applause for making the fight scene in H-Town truly the best. Let's give them all a big round of applause. <laughs> and before we move on to our next fight, we will also like to take a moment to thank our sponsors this evening and a special thank you to our title sponsor, Bud Light and the good people at Silver Eagle Distributors, H-Town in Houston, Texas. A big thank you for all your enduring support of combat sports and the Houston community. So ladies and gentlemen, this Bud is for you. Enjoy that Bud Light tonight and a big thank you once again to Bud Light. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 
live from the GHS Event Center in Houston, Texas. We are streaming worldwide on clearlifemedia.com. Welcome to Bud Light Fight Night! Set for our next attraction as we flip it over to the MMA side. And it's scheduled for three five-minute rounds for the PCS Heavyweight Championship. We introduce to you first, hailing out of Dayton, Texas, and training out of Houston, Texas, here is Rakim the Boogeyman Cleveland. Rakeem, the boogeyman, Cleveland, 23 and 15. He trains out of War Training Center in Cypress, Texas. I know the guys at War Throw Down. I'm expecting no different from Rakeem, Cleveland tonight. Yeah, Rakeem is a highly experienced professional. Uh, he's fought uh, for some of the biggest, uh, some of the biggest MMA promotions out there. Yeah, I think he's a PFL vet. You, know, you get a name like the Boogeyman, you yeah. gotta earn it, right? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. This guy's a PFL and Bellator veteran. He's had a ton of fights. He's got a he's got a great ground game, good ground and pound. Uh, pretty decent on the feet. See Trevin Giles in his corner. Coach Copley and. Coach Jeremy as well out of War Training Center. <laughs> Professor Joe Solis checking out Rakeem, making sure that he's good to go. And this is gonna be our first MMA bout of the evening. And I am excited. I'm excited, I'm very excited. Set and ready to go. I think we're going to throw it to Jeremiah Gallego so he can introduce our next fighter. The boogeyman. That's a big. opponent from Baltimore, Maryland. Here is the defending reigning champion, Shelton the Grave Digger Graves. Grave Digger Graves sitting at a record of 10 and 6. You know, he came in at PCS 3, <laughs> took care of business, went against Juan Adams. And now he's the champion. Yeah, I, I would say that he uh, he won the upset in that fight. I think Juan Adams probably came in as as the uh, heavy betting favorite in that fight, being a D1 uh, Division One wrestling champion. Um, but he got on Juan early, had some good takedown defense, and overwhelmed him with strikes. I remember his hands being really good. Yeah, I, I, I agree, especially early on in the fight. He's, he's got some pretty heavy, he's got some good heavy power. And he, uh, he's he got some tricky switch stance combinations where he's kind of plods forward with one stance, switches stances mid combination. Um, he's got some heavy power, especially in his lead hand. Yeah, I had the chance to talk to him at the, at the weigh-ins yesterday. And he was just saying, I'm gonna do what I do. I gotta take care of business pretty much, so. Uh, you know, Colin, how does the ring, it's a boxing ring, it's MMA and a boxing ring, how does that play a factor? I feel like if you're a wrestler, it may not be your advantage. I mean, we're in a, a ropes in ring. I think that, yeah, so what? I think one thing that a lot of MMA fighters get wrong, especially when they're transitioning from like a wrestling background, for example, is that they're used to the other guy kind of being head to head with them and ducking under to get shots. 
But in MMA, you kind of have to close the distance with your punches and, uh, and, and be much closer to, in order to, to get a hold of your opponent. I think where it actually has the bigger um, effect on the fight in MMA is on the ground. It's, it's harder to do get-ups, right? You don't have the cage wall there to, uh, to, to use to, as like a third, third wall to kind of step up. So, and, and I see this fight as a kind of classic grappler versus striker kind of matchup. I think uh, Rakim is probably gonna try to get this fight to the ground as quickly as he can. And, uh, and, and I, see, I see Shelton trying to keep it on the feet and try to, try, to, try to win this fight standing. Yeah, Rakim Cleveland, he last fought in March for Bellator at Bellator 293 and he won by submission. Yeah, I was, uh, I was looking at that. Uh, Thinking this is going to be a, 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 a one of those fights where he just tries to go in, Colin, and and and, and, and work what he knows best. And and, yeah. and now we're going to throw it to Jeremiah Gallegos to get this fight going. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is our special MMA championship attraction, the Bud Light Fight Night. PCS4 Series title attraction presented by Paradigm Combat Sports in association with Next Fight Up. Our sponsor for this feature, Vitality Chiropractic Recovery and Wellness. This championship attraction is scheduled for three five minute rounds for the PCS Heavyweight Championship. And it is sanctioned by the Texas Combative Sports Commission. The three judges scored this contest at ringside are Joe Solis, Randy Russell, Dr. Kelly Isaac, and our referee in charge of the action here at the sound of the bell, Jeff Rexroad. And now we are set for championship action. Fight fans, are you ready? To my left, fighting out of the blue corner, standing with Jeremy Mayhom, wearing black, his official weight, 245.4 pounds. He stands six feet, three inches tall. His professional record, 40 fights, 23 victories, 14 wins by way of knockout, 15 defeats, one draw, and one no contest. Here is the former fighting member of PLF, and Bellator, a freestyle fighter, fighting out of Houston, Texas, by way of Dayton, Texas, Rakim, the Boogeyman, Cleveland. And his opponent tonight, fighting out of the red corner, standing with trainer, Ron Stallings, wearing white with black. His official weight, 263.1 pounds. He stands six feet, two inches tall. With 16 professional fights, his record, 10 victories, six wins by way of knockout, with six defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the multi-time title holder, the PCS champion, the undefeated champion, the reigning champion, freestyle fighter from Baltimore, Maryland, Shelton, the Grave Digger All right, guys, you both know the rules, so I expect a clean fight. Obey my commands at all times and protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves, back to your corners. We got three five-minute rounds, and this matchup is underway. underway. Ooh. Oh, big. Big Quick left tie hand up. by Rakeem. Ties up. We got the big boys on us in the corner. Yeah. Sheldon Graves got his head in Rakeem's chin. Rakeem shows, throws a short, nice short left hand, or right hand there, excuse me. 
Rakeem's doing a good, uh, Shelton's doing a good job turning him. Keeping his back off the ropes. This is for the heavyweight title, the PCS heavyweight title. And this is what he did to, uh, to Juan Adams as well. Yes. Juan being the wrestler, he backed, he backed him straight up against the ropes and just unloaded a barrage of punches. That was interesting though. Gra Graves did change levels there and look for a takedown on, on uh, Rakeem. But if, if I expect anybody to have an advantage on the, on the ground, I think it's gonna be Rakeem probably. Rakeem trying a little cross face here. Made space for a little knee and an elbow. Looking to dig his underhooks, trying to turn Graves back into the ropes. Rakeem looks a little bored here. I don't, yeah. I don't think he's too concerned with this. Graves is getting points though, right? Yeah, and, and definitely, yeah. I mean, he's winning positionally. He's got his head in the chin. You know, he's trying to trying to create something. Jeff Rexrod going to bring it back to the center. Yeah, he didn't see enough action there. I, I, I really do love that about the MMA. The separating. <laughs> yeah. Big yeah. shot by Rakeem. When, it, when there's too much of that extra going on, when there's nothing going on, they're not doing anything. They try to force the action. You know, and the sure. lack of the cage, I think, also go, comes into play with that, that lack of, uh, of action. I think it throws some fighters off because, you know, in, in the ring you have these corners, right? Right. And in, in a cage, you don't really have, like, as tight of a corner, so it's, you can't use it to your advantage as much, and it, it kind of throws some fighters off. Right. What about the ropes? How do the ropes play apart? There's a lot more bounce on them, you know, so, like, you can use the bounce to either, you know, get a better body lock or a takedown. You can also, you know, defensively use the ropes. Like, if you're in a bad position, you kind of just peek your head out the back and hope the referee kind of stops and separates you. You got Graves and it makes, throwing some knees in the corner. It makes getting up a lot harder as well. You know, with a, with a cage, you have a pretty solid back wall that you can kind of lean into as you're build, building your base up. And it's a lot harder on the ropes here. I would say so, because look, you see, you know, the boogeyman doing what he needs to do, getting that underhook, trying to switch, and he, he gets this better position now, but he, he lacks that, that cage to push up against to explode out. Yeah, he's doing a good job at the head position. That's something I always tell my fighters when you're in the clinch, you want to get your head under the other guy's chin. And he's shooting that knee up every now and again mm -hmm. to his gut. Yeah, just touching the body. Rakeem doesn't seem to have too much sense of urgency here. No. Yeah, he seems comfortable. Yeah. Or, or just not threatened. Right, that's that, that, That's what I see. It looks like, like you said earlier, it looks bored. Like, look at him. He's bringing him back to their corners, and it looks like there's a little bit of uh, tape coming out of his glove. He's going to get the corner to, to yank that out, and then he's going to try and reset them in the same position. Jeff Rexrode, one of the best in the game, he's on top of it. One of the best in, my, in the game and one of my former coaches, actually. Great guy. Uh, I love how I love how Graves is punching his leg though. Mm. Yeah, those, constantly the, just putting just, just a little something. You know, it, it doesn't take much to t to create a Charlie horse or, or just to cause a little pain. And you know, it doesn't seem like much, but uh, but they add up and they make you tired over the over the long course. You know, both gentlemen there kind of went for takedowns. And while Graves is, is and, and while Rakim is feeling uh, all the weight comfortable. Um, or, 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 or bored, it, you know, <laughs> Graves is getting great. Graves is winning the fight. Graves is, yeah, asserting his dominance. He's asserting right. his will, right? He's doing what he wants to do in this fight, which, to be honest, is a little surprising because, again, I, I saw this as kind of a classic grappler versus striker matchup. Right. I didn't really see uh, Shelton going for takedowns, um, and Rakeem has won a bunch of fights on the ground, so I kind of kind of imagine Rakeem would be the one trying to go for the takedown here. But there in the corner, he doesn't really have to worry about those submissions because, I mean, he's just kind of trapped there, just winning those, the battle of those little knees and punches. And, and, and I love how he's positioning in his head, uh, Graves is, to keep himself from, from, to keep this guy from acting. Look. Right, under the chin. Under the chin, on the side of the chin, pushing him. And, and it's usually on the same side he either has the overhook or underhook on, right? That's going to be it for round number one. Both fighters going back to their corners. You can see Rakeem again, he kind of looks bored, huh? He's just kind of like looking around like, hey, what am I supposed to do with this, right? Yeah, it was a little, 
little lackluster first round. Hopefully, uh, Coach Jeremy Mahon can get in his ear and tell him, hey, we need a little bit more sense of urgency. I'd like to see them fight out in the open a little bit more. You yeah. know? Um, I don't think either one of the fighters is dominating in the clinch very well. So. Yeah. Well, you can see the corner for, for Graves kind of giving him that, the instructions like, hey, here's how you connect your hands and the clinch. So that may be the game plan, at least for the second round again. Yeah, maybe they think their power is going to translate on top. I don't know. It's, again, watching watching the highlights of both these guys, they, you know, Graves really struck me as more of a striker, so it's a bit of a surprise right. to see him looking for those takedowns. It, 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 he looks like a, a universal fighter right now. Like, yeah. he's able to do it all. Yeah, yeah. he looks well-rounded, for sure. I thought he was... I, 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 like you, thought this was going to be uh, striker versus a uh, uh, grappler. Round two is but now underway. Different. See if uh, Cleveland comes out with a little bit more sense of urgency. And some open space right now. Nice inside low kick. <laughs> Looks like he's trying to keep him away from him, where Keem is. Right, trying to keep the distance, maybe strike from outside range. Ooh. Nice combinations there. Yeah. But Great. Graves gets his hands locked, gets his head position again. Yeah, listen to his coaches. I wonder if he's going to try and take him back to his corner. It looks like he's just taking him wherever he goes. Up against the ropes. Yeah, just leaning on him. You know, this right. is something I did in a lot of my fights. I would get underhooks, kind of lean on my training partners, I, I, or my opponents. I, I wasn't always the strongest or the fastest guy, and so I'd try to slow the fights down a little bit. Ooh, my Big elbows, elbows, big elbows. Rakeem. I feel like if he shot the uppercut up, it would have landed better rather than chin. He had a better chance of getting him out. Yeah, and in these yeah, yeah, really yeah. tight, short spaces, one, one big advantage, I think, for MMA is that you can turn those short hooks into elbows, right? And that, that's usually what you do in these, like, really tight ranges like this. You load right. up on some, some elbows. Mm -hmm. And Rakeem landed a few really nice ones right there. Yeah, I'd Rakeem, like to see him keep going back to that. Ah, uh, Rakeem was enjoying that, that corner control, and now he gets turned around. Well, he's losing the head position battle, yes, like Coach is. was saying. And, and and that's what's controlling and that's what's controlling the dominance in, 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 in this clinch or whatever it looks like is that is that that head motion, that head movement. How he keeps him there, keeps yeah. hundred percent. And actually Rakeem has the underhooks. And usually in a wrestling situation, that's where you're uh, that's the more dominant position, but because he's losing the head battle. You can see that Graves is actually just dominating with both underhooks and overhooks. On both sides. He's yeah. getting some shoulder strikes in there as well, just trying to stay busy in the corner. You got to love a good shoulder strike every now and then. Even some <laughs> leg punches. Just doing enough to stay busy and keep Jeff Rexrod from breaking it up. It's the second round of a three-round fight for the PCS Heavyweight Championship. Right there. See it right there? There. See, as soon as he gets his head in the chin, he starts winning uh -huh. the battle. Big knee. Nice knee. Nice. Looked like it was right on the liver, but didn't seem to affect Graves that much at all. <laughs> Graves is a beast. He, he's doing a great job bullying Rakeem. You know, just kind of keeping his weight on him. Just constantly. But that's, it, 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 this, is, this, this, is, this almost looks like the one fight. Yeah. Yeah. Just pressure in, dirty boxing in, on the inside. And keeping it going. On the back of the center now. Let's see what Rakeem does. Look, that's where he wants to be. He, nice he, Superman ooh. punch, but gets caught with some counters on the he way got in. He with that right hook. Yeah. Graves leading the pressure. He doesn't have his mouthpiece all the way in. No, it's like kind, it's of, kind of sticking out a little bit. Of it. Yeah. Oh, you catch one of those in nice. the mouth, that's going to hurt you. Nice right hand, left hook. But again, Graves just kind of pressures in, gets the head position. Now he's got his hands locked yeah. under the butt. What's he trying to do, scoop him? Yeah, he's trying to take him down. Switches Single to, to the a back. high crotch and then gets to the back. I look for him to do a mat return here. Yep, look to trip that knee and try to drive him over one of his legs. Rakeem is... And he gets on top. Okay, who's going to rush to get to, get to the top? Rakeem looking for a switch here. If he can get his hips out, he can get this. Yeah, Graves has that leg hook, that foot hooked right there, preventing him from coming up. That's exactly right. 
You know, this yeah. is something I haven't thought about. I wonder if you can grab the ropes. I know you can't grab the cage, but I assume you can't grab the ropes either. You can't grab the ropes, but you okay. can kind of hook your arm on it. It's kind of one of those weird gray areas the where... The man landing shots from the top. Yep. All of his weight on top. Great. Landing some good ground and pound here. Great. Rakeem, Rakeem's looking a little... A little, a little lost. Like this here. might be out. Might he's be in, over. He's in turtle oh. right now. He has the other hand trapped. He has Graves' other hand trapped. But what does he need to do right now? Well, he needs to free that bottom hand. You can see how it's trapped right here. Rakeem, yeah. I mean, uh, Rakeem just got flattened out by Graves. He's, he's doing the right face. thing. He got back to his knees, freed that hand. But he needs to build his base up or turn back Graves into is Graves. Graves huge. Because he's just letting Graves land his land shots here. Ooh. Nice knee to the body by Graves. And Rakeem's acting like it's not affecting him, but but, but he's losing this fight. Yeah, the, the first, this second round is about over. Yeah. And the second round has been controlled by Graves. Another dominant round for Graves. Another dominant round for Graves. Yeah. This is, uh... Graves is, 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 is just a fighter fighter. You know, if you're looking at... Rakeem's still on his knees here. He's not looking so good. You know, he was he was rubbing his eye. I wonder if he has a contact where he got an eye poke when he was underneath there because his eye looked like he was kind of affected there. So, I mean, that's going to come into play to this final third round. Absolutely. He, he just doesn't seem to have his head in the game. And, uh, you know, hopefully Coach Jeremy Mahon can get, it, get his fighter back in this fight. He needs a knockout. But he's looking a little discouraged at this point. Yeah, or a submission. Yeah. Or submission, yeah. Or submission. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but the, the heavyweight champion, he's been doing and finding the fight that he needs to to retain his title. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and, 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 and he's not, it, it's, not a, it's not a scared fight. Like, I'm trying to keep my title. Yeah. Right. It, 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 he's fighting a fight. He's, he's fighting. Right. Rakeem hasn't really been big enough of a threat, and he hasn't really pressured right. him at all, so. It's the third and final round is about to be underway. You know, Graves Rakeem. looks excited. He looks kind of fresh, to be honest. Yeah, and Rakeem, Rakeem's still shaking his eye out. Or rubbing his rubbing out his eye, so. Trying to get back in this fight. Graves pushing him up up, up against that the ropes. Clash. Yeah. <laughs> I think Jeff Rexrod was warning them in the corner that he needed to watch those head clashes and the back of the head shots, but. Yeah. More of the same thing from, from uh, Shelton Graves here. Getting that underhook, getting his head position, and just dirty boxing Rakeem on the inside, making it a dirty fight. Rakeem's trying to get to the center of the cage. I mean, that's what he needs to do, get out from there. I'd like to see Rakeem try to go for a takedown of his own. He, he really hasn't tried to get, get the takedown yet. Some, wow. It just takes one shot. It does. From either one of these gentlemen. He's still rubbing his eye. You can see Rakeem is rubbing his eye there. Yeah, and it's looking a little lazy. I wonder if yeah. it's like injured real bad. He, now he's turning away from Graves. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Graves trying to land the shoulder shots, the little leg and, and, and hit punches as well, just anything. And that, I'd just like to, get to a see score. Graves use some elbows here. I think, you know, he, ha he keeps getting these frames on Rakeem. And he's landing those shoulder strikes and the knees and the little short hooks, but but those elbows can be devastating in that short range. Especially if you already got a guy hurt. You know, one thing you could do is like, because he Rakeem's having trouble seeing out of that one eye, you throw an elbow from that side, Rakeem doesn't even see it coming. Right. That could be the difference between, uh, yeah. you know, going to decision or finishing Bring it the right fight. Because he's, he's, he's hooking him and, 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 and hitting. On each side, and each side he's getting the hand free. Exactly. All he has to do is get the, get his hands to the inside, frame on the inside, and then turn that elbow over. Rakeem, you know, seems a bit content right here, but I know that, I mean, those shoulder shots, and you feel every bit of that. I mean, what does that feel like there in the corner? You know, they're mostly annoying, but they, they will jar you, jar you and get your attention. Um, and... You know, we, as we've seen with like Conor McGregor fights, they can be super effective. He, so Graves, he had that leg. It looked like he let it go. Rakeem kind of yeah. pushing and framing away. 
Rakeem's had pretty good takedown defense, but he just hasn't yeah. been able to but he keep Graves to, off of him. Yeah. yeah, or do nothing in. <sighs> well, this is a big thing that we work on at, at Paradigm a lot, is when, when your back is on the fence, we always have a sense of urgency to turn, right? Yeah. We gotta at least get your back off of the fence. Even if you're right. not, you know, even if you don't put the other person's back on the fence, you at least want to circle out, get back to the middle, reset. The longer you spend with your back up against the fence or the ropes, you know, the the, the more it looks bad on the judges' scorecards. So, Rakeem's got the position here. He's got the body lock. I'd like to see him go for a trip of some kind. You know, step around the side, block the knee, take him over the knee. But again, he just, he just doesn't seem. Yeah, he doesn't seem motivated to try to try to get this. Nice little uppercut in there, but Graves just pressuring, getting his head position in there. Yeah, Graves just working the body, using that shoulder to his advantage as well. These close, these close, tight shots. Nice uppercut there. Under two minutes left to go in this third and final round. A couple short little left hooks there from, from Graves. Get some back control. Whatever it is, it's affecting him for sure. Yeah, it's, I mean, at this point, he's got a minute left. Yeah. He's got to do something pretty drastic to try to win this. He's I'd like to see, you know, Graves also maybe just take a step back and just see let your knee. hands go. Yeah, just see if he can. Elbow. Yeah, get this guy out of there, you know? He's just mauling him. <laughs> it looks like he's talking to him. Yeah, hopefully, maybe we'll try to get him fired up. We got 30 seconds left. Try to, you know, he try to finish strong. You know, landing some knees of his own, kind of turned it over there in the corner, and, and Graves just turns it right back. Just being the bully. There's a little tight elbow right there. You know, I, I'd like to see, I'd like to know what's up next for Graves. You know, yeah. Who do, who do, who do we get next to fight him? You know, right. So far, he's. I think he's sort of, you know, been the upset in both of these fights. Uh, I think Rakeem probably has the higher experience level, but he absolutely dominated Rakeem there. You still see Rakeem Cleveland Whoever, messing, you know, touching that eye, and I'm sure that, that's a huge gonna, factor in this fight. I'm sorry, who's ever going to fight the Grave Digger next <laughs> is in for a hell of a... This guy is good, man. Like, seriously. Like, every time he's brought in, it looks like, I, I mean, the... the, the, the the guy on the opposite side looks like he's supposed to be better. Right, absolutely. On paper. No, on paper, both times, the other guy has been a better fighter, and both times, he dominated the fight, so. You see Reed coming in the ring. Got that beautiful PCS championship, heavyweight championship belt. That is nice, isn't it? It's very nice. All right, we're gonna throw this in a minute to Jeremiah Gallegos, where he will announce the winner, the, the heavyweight champion. Ladies and gentlemen, after three five-minute rounds, we go the distance. And now we go to the judges' scorecards. Here are the totals. All three judges have this contest. 30 to 27 in favor to the winner by unanimous decision. And he is still the PCS Heavyweight Champion, Shelton. The Grave Digger Craig! Working on a weekend like usual. Way off in the deep. 
say my days are numbered. Congratulations on that victory. Still the heavyweight champion. Text, baby, Was that the fight you were expecting to happen? I can't hear you. Okay, there you go. Say it one more time, I can't hear you. Was that the fight that you were expecting to happen? Uh, no. Um, I expected, honestly, like, you know, come up here and fight somebody who's a grizzled vet. So I got a challenge or whatnot, and then that's what I do. I rise to brother. When I get a knockout, I get a decision. Either way, I'm going to win. That's how I kind of carry myself and whatnot. And it's nothing against him. He put up a good effort and whatnot, but I could tell some way through the second round he didn't want to fight anymore. So I just kept trying to put the pressure on him. We were talking at the commentary table, and we're deciding who's next. Is there somebody that you want next? What's next for you? Anybody. I spent about, like, what, two years, four years, and nobody wanted to fight me. Anybody want to step a challenge? I had two people who were grizzled veterans and believed in themselves, Raheem and Juan, who fought me. I got to care of both of them. They get an opportunity to do their thing. I feel like if I get to the, the, the big stage, I can take out a lot of people. Is there anything else that you'd like to share? Um, I want to thank everybody who came out. My man Bob Malone, whose birthday's coming up. My mother, who's screaming in the background. Her birthday's coming up. In a couple of days, we're taking her to Florida for her birthday because she won't go to Disneyland big year. Give a happy birthday, everybody sees her. She's amazing, my biggest cheerleader. Um, and my corners and my mans and whatnot. Without fight, I've never met my man Ron. We never used to my man Jeff or Johnny. And my man Tefon and my, my cousins and them over there and whatnot. My beautiful wife right there. Uh, it's Uncle Ronald, I see you on IRC. Tefon, you suck. I'm still better than you. You would never beat me, ever. And, <laughs> and Muhammad, come out here and do business. The guy in about two fights, Muhammad Ali, you want to see pure power? Check out the fight in two fights. He's going to take this guy out. I guarantee it. Congratulations, and I'm excited to be at your next fight. Us. Thank you. Us. Best enough for making real for me.